Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. The other day, somebody wrote me a vicious comment. And the comment was meant to hurt my feelings. This person said, Dante, you always talking about gay stuff. And then they said that your channel seems like it on it only talks about sexual assault cases. And you know what? At first I got angered. But then I said, you know what? You're right. You are absolutely right. When I went back and I looked at my thumbnails and my titles and stuff, I was unaware that my channel has literally turned into the black version of Law & Order Special Victims Unit. It did. And I admit that. So, right now what I'm saying is thank you for whoever wrote me that vicious comment. But see, what you don't understand is what you meant for evil, I took as good, right? Let me explain a little bit more. I talk about the things that people are very uncomfortable talking about. I talk about the things that a lot of YouTubers would dare not to speak about. And I'm aware that with a badge of honor. Shout out to everybody that be rocking with me, though. Shout out to all y'all. But let's get to what, what we're here for. Now, towards the end of my bid, one would say Dante grew soft. One would say, oh, Dante wasn't that violent anymore. He was more hesitant and, you know, would want to talk things out and, you know, see the other side opinion. And the reason why I turned out that way was because there was a guy that came in there and he had bad charges. Now, when I first got in there and the way I was programming, if you had bad charges off the rip, it was immediate violence, immediate violence. Just off the top, right? Until this guy came in, and well, this is where this story comes at. So, you get this man, and he get with this woman. This woman has four kids, and the four kids that she has, they are all teenage girls. Well, they are not teenagers, but most of them are teenagers from the ages of maybe 17 to maybe 10, right? So... According to the family and according to the friends of this guy, he was a really good dude. He he never ever was accused of doing any of these things that one of the daughters said that he did. Now, keep in mind, men get accused of doing the unthinkable all the time. Some of them be innocent, and but mass majority are guilty. But when you hit the penitentiary, we ain't really got that much. T we ain't got time to try to figure it out. Right. So normally, like I said, in my first bid, what would happen is, like I said, every Tuesday, new inmates would come in and we have a tribunal set, set up. And some people will be like, what's a tribunal? Well, some other people might know it as kangaroo court kangaroo court is basically when you get sentenced already and now when the judge sentences you and you hit the penitentiary and you want to plead your case before you get messed up then you can be judged by your peers so rightfully so they have me head of the tribunal so they bring an inmate in there that's accused or whatever and Dante will listen to the story and I will pass judgment of what's going to happen. And usually when we get the new inmates come in and if any of them got bad charges or snitching allegations or whatever, I tell them off the rip. 
Like, listen, if y'all got any bad charges, because at this time, y'all, we couldn't ask them to see their paperwork or there'd be a, it will get written up. So we had to do it in a different way. So I would tell everybody, all the new inmates that have come in on Tuesday, like, listen, if you got, if, if you got any bad charges or snitching charges, I'm going to need for you to get on the door right now. And maybe two or three people will get on the door and they leave out of there. Then right after that, after they leave out, the rest of the inmates, the new inmates that have come in, I had them come up to my cell. And then I come out with a huge knife. And and I can be I can talk about this now because it's past the statute of limitations. Right, been ten years now. So then I come out with this huge knife and I would let them know if you ain't willing to get a hold of one of these and use it, go get on the door. And a couple people will leave and they'll get on the door. And then from there on, it is what it is. Now, this guy that came in there with the bad charges after the whole tribunal thing with me testing these guys to see seeing where they at he came to me and he said hey listen what i was accused of was a bad charge you know my it's not even my stepdaughter but i call her my stepdaughter she ended up telling her mama that i was touching her and i basically violated her and I said, okay, why are you telling me that? He said, no, nah, because I didn't do it. I'm really innocent. So I'm like, well, speak your peace. He said, well, the girl that I got into a relationship, she, she had these four daughters or whatever. And um, she had to end up going to prison for a year. So I stepped up because they daddies wasn't involved at all. So I held it down for a whole year while they mama was in prison. You know, I was cooking for them, cleaning for them, taking them to school. I did everything that I supposed to do as, you know, they mama boyfriend. And then out of nowhere, when my girl get out of prison, the daughter is telling her that I came in her room and violated her. And then this girl went so far as got my phone texting my texting her phone back and forth like i'm having a conversation with her and being real explicit and saying i'm sorry for doing that to you and then she'll delete the message out of my phone so this is why i'm here i said you do know how that sound right like it's a whole conspiracy theory right he like listen i know i know how si how crazy that sound but it's the truth. It's the honest God truth. Now listen, y'all. It's it's not easy to fool me. It's I have a good I I have a good way to discern things. And I really felt like this dude was telling the truth. So I said, So you mean to tell me you got into a relationship with this chick that got four teenage girls? And when a chick go to prison for a whole year, you stepped up, you held it down. You did what you're supposed to do. And for the mama to get out and then not shortly after one of the daughters say that you violated her and she got text messages proving that you admitted to doing this and you apologizing. And that if that's what you want me to believe. He said, that's the that's the honest guy. True. Now, listen, y'all, remember I told y'all this was towards the end of my bed. I done settled down. I done, I, I didn't immediately go to violence. Now, if this would have happened in my earlier bed, it, would, it wouldn't have been no talking. This story sounds crazy, right? All evidence is stacked against him. So he say, listen, bro. I, I got an appeal going on right now. And 
you know, I talked to her and I asked her, like, why is you doing this? Be before they came and carted me away. And she just clearly said, I don't want you to be a my mama. I miss my dad. But the thing about it is dad was never with mama. It was more like a one night stand. But for some reason, this girl was thinking, well, maybe if if he out the picture that she can get back with my dad, the girl was angry. And then dude was disciplining her too, not putting hands on her or anything, but putting her on punishment. You know, when she get in trouble at school and stuff, you know, it was that whole spill. Like you ain't my daddy, but your daddy ain't there. And he take care of this business. Nevertheless, y'all, the girl ended up recanting her statement and told the truth because she felt real bad. Her mama was crying every day. Like, man, I just, I don't believe he did it. Now, anybody that's out there, you know, I, I understand. You got to listen to your child. You have to listen to your child. Because nine times out of ten, they telling the truth. But for that one out of ten that's not telling the truth, it's, this is a cold world, y'all. It's cold. It's ice cold. The worst thing that you can be accused of coming into the penitentiary is for is being accused of forcing yourself on a child or a woman do you know what type of consequences come with that do you know what can happen to you in there you can get violated yourself and then this will be another episode of the dante show network where i'm talking about he touched somebody's daughter now he getting heavy piped put on him in a jail cell but this ain't one of them stories this is the story of a man that got accused of doing the unthinkable, but was innocent. So I'm listening to him and I'm like, so this just don't sound right. He like, listen, man, she recanted herself. She told her mom and I said, well, how I don't know she did that because she just felt, you know, like, OK, he got locked up and now she feel guilty that you got locked up. He said, no, nah, man. Because she even told her, her, she told her best friend this too. Like, I didn't really want him to go to jail. I just wanted him not to be in my mama. But then her friend was telling her, like, but he really a good dude. You know, he stepped up when your mama got locked up. He, y'all, you know, y'all dads didn't step up. Your dad didn't step up. He stepped up. So she was like, yeah, okay, you right, you right. So she came forward to tell her mama, her mama, I was like, why did you do that and this and that? And you know what could happen to him in prison and all this and that with them type of charges. And they brought it to the lawyer, brought it to the DA. And well, what I told him was this. I said, listen, I'm a fair man. <clears throat> and the only reason why I haven't took off on you yet, keep in mind I said yet. I had the homies come in here and do you bad after the warning that I told everybody before y'all settled in. Because I kind of believe you. I kind of believe you. It's something about you that I don't, it, 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 it don't seem like you making this up, that you lying. So he said, yeah, but I said, but the rules are still the rules. What that look like if I let, if I allow you to live in this dorm with them type of charges even if you are innocent this is prison where right is wrong and wrong is right and he like I, I, I understand that I said but I'll tell you what you got 20 minutes to pack it up and tell the guards that you fear for your life and he was like yeah I, I get that that you could I appreciate that I said nah don't tell me that you appreciate it. Just pack your stuff up and you got to roll. So he was like, okay. Let me tell y'all something. They freed that man two months later. Two months later, they freed that man. And when they freed him, I thought about something. I said to myself, people that get locked up that are innocent, but especially with them type of charges and they innocent, 
Think about the terror, the fear that could be going through. Because make no mistake, y'all. Just because this had a happy ending, well, I don't really know what this whole term there for them two months was happy. I, I, I don't know. Maybe he had to fight. Maybe. I, I don't know. When he went to a different dorm. But I do know this, though. Going to prison is a bad feeling anyway. You know, you go there for robbery, taking somebody's life, drugs, whatever the case is. You know, don't, don't nobody typically mess with. I mean, everybody get tested. Everybody get messed with. But if you come in there with some bad charges like that, you, you get an extras. You get extras put on your plate. But when you're innocent, oh, God. Life ain't fair, y'all. That's the whole point of this video, really, is life is not fair. And I'm not telling nobody not to get in a relationship with a woman that has kids. But you got to be careful. You got to be very careful nowadays. Because you could end up like homeboy. You could end up like him. In the situation that all you wanted to do was be with mom and play stepdad to these girls because their daddy's not in their life. And now you in the penitentiary with Dante that got the keys and got the scales of balance to how you going to live the rest of your days. Ain't that, a, ain't that a trip? There's another criminal, another inmate. You already been judged. You already been sentenced. But then there's an inmate, another criminal, that hold the key to you living a certain way. Ain't that a trip? But that's prison in a nutshell. A crazy world. Let me tell y'all something. I remember one time, y'all want to know the craziest thing that I ever seen while locked up? The craziest thing that I ever seen while locked up and I said, yo, I can't be here. I just can't be in here. I remember I was in Jackson Pike. Shout out to Columbus, Ohio, 614, the workhouse. I was in Jackson Pike. And y'all know, uh, for the people that have been locked up in Jackson Pike, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you got the date when you first come in. You got the day room. I think it got maybe like two tables right there. And then it's an opening that you walk through, and that's where all the bunk beds is at. That one toilet all the way in the back with the brick that's covering the toilet and the shower right there to the right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I remember one time I was sitting right by this, by this window eating my lunch. And I happened to look over to the left. I'm, I'm right here by the window. Somebody was chipping at the window, but I think it was like, I want to say plexiglass, but it was it's a real very hard uh plastic that these windows are whatever. But somebody was chipping away at it and you get a little 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 cool breeze that come through there, right? But I got to looking like really really looking. And then I seen like these little white bugs translucent bugs and i'm and i was just thinking like you wouldn't even know if these things was on you and then i said to myself like yo i gotta get out of here i got to get out of here it's so many unknowns unknown variables that goes on and lock up somebody could wake up one day and just felt feel like the the, the whole world done wrong them and you done said something that wasn't even offensive. And now they got an attitude. And they done called you out your name. And you about to go home in a couple months. But you know if you get into this altercation. You go into the hole. You going to jack your time up. Right. But then again at the same time. No disrespect is tolerated. Because even if, if you around people. And you try to walk away and let it go. Other people's going to take that as a sign of weakness and try to do something to you or try to disrespect you. That's why I said, listen, I stay at home, y'all. I stay at home. I try to lessen my time being out in the public because 
I just don't want to make a mistake. I just don't want to. I just don't want to end up losing my freedom again. I've been practicing. I've been practicing peace. I've been not talking and associating with certain people because I know every time I answer the phone is always drama feeding me negative feeding my spirit negativity you know what i mean always gossiping always every time i answer the phone is something negative so anybody that be in talking to me and wonder why dante ain't been answering the phone check yourself because this is the reason my spirit can't handle that man i'm trying to go a peaceful way of living do y'all know i don't drink alcohol no more no nah. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I mean, I wasn't a drinker anyway, but every once in a while when I was real stressed out or whatever, I would drink like a strawberry ackee smearing off or like a, what, what it was the, it's an orange smearing off, twist something, whatever. I never was a heavy, hard hitter drinker ever because I hate the taste of alcohol, but sometimes when I was stressed out, I mean really stressed out, y'all. You know, I go get me a smearing off, of, you know, an apple smearing off, a strawberry smearing off, and fill it up with a lot of ice and just sip on it. You know, that's how I used to unwind when I was stressed out. But I understand that alcohol, weed, drugs, all that, that's not good for you. It ain't. You got to figure out why am I, why am I using these substances to cope with life? And I know there's some people that really done been through some things. I know, I know there's people that's dependent on alcohol, dependent on these drugs because of life, because of trauma. I get it. But I also want y'all to know that we, we were made in God image. We can overpower anything. We can overpower anything that is in our lives. Don't y'all see? I don't get. I don't. Okay, some of y'all gonna be like, oh, here go Dante with his Bible talk. Let me tell y'all something. On Judgment Day, you gonna wish you stayed and listened to Dante Bible talk when I get to ranting about the Bible. Y'all, right, listen. I'm not here to, to convert nobody. I'm not here to try to save a soul but i am here to teach and give advice because a lot of y'all a lot of y'all even you grown-ups a lot of y'all think that when you put your hand on the hot stove it won't burn you y'all know that old saying y'all think that fat meat ain't greasy i made some ribs about a month ago and my lady, she freeze them because I made too much meat. She freeze them. She unthawed some of it yesterday. It was really good. Y'all know it, it was really good. But it was greasy like a mug. See, a lot of y'all don't think that fat meat is greasy. But y'all going to find out. Understand this, y'all. None of us is perfect. We all got flaws. We all done did trifling things. We, done, we all done did things that... You know, we ain't proud of. We done did things that we going to the grave with. Right? But there is also good inside of us. We also have done, even a murderer, right? A real messed up person done did good and did good in somebody's life at one point in time, right? I'm venting, y'all. I'm sorry. Can, can Dante vent for a second? D just for a second, y'all. What I'm saying is this. Whatever you going through in your life right now, and life might seem that is giving you troubles, understand that there's somebody just living way worse than you are. Somebody might say, man, I ain't got no car, right? But you got a bike. And then somebody might say, well, I ain't got no bike, but you can get on the bus. And then you get somebody say, well, I can't even get on the bus or I don't even got no bike, but you can walk. 
And if somebody say, I can't get on the bus, I ain't got no car, I ain't got no, I, and I can't walk because I ain't got no legs. You see what I'm going with this? There's always somebody that's living worse than you are at your current situation. And I always tell y'all this, just because you down right now, just because you ain't living right or you ain't where you want to be at in life right now at this very moment, that don't mean that, that that's that's all what it's going to be from here on out. You have to get out and do something. They say that the definition of insanity is that when you keep doing the exact same thing, expecting a different result, that is insanity. If you are broke, toe up, and just want to get out your situation, but you too prideful to go work at McDonald's or Taco Bell or one of these, you know, low paying jobs, you have to humble yourself and go do that until you able to advance and progress. You know, nobody should stay stagnant in whatever they doing unless you really enjoy what you doing. And, I, and I'm not saying that people work at restaurants is stagnant no because some people that, that might be their full ability of what they can comprehend and do everybody can't be a boss everybody can't be an entrepreneur everybody can't be a warehouse worker everybody can't be a youtuber everybody can't be a police officer you got to figure out what you are good at and hopefully you can monetize that and make money if not there's nothing wrong with a job there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, with having a job. And, and stop listening to these new age women that's talking about, oh, my man got to make $100,000 when she's not even making $10,000 a year. If that person that, that you want to be with or holler at, so damn diluted and messed up mentally, and saying that you have to have this and have that, that person obviously ain't for you. They say it's about what? Eight billion people on this planet? When they say there's a lot of fish in the sea, hey, and remember this, everybody ain't for everybody. What worked for me may not work for you. And what worked for you, damn sure, might don't work for me. Remember that. And me saying all that to say this, be the best version of yourself. Be the best version of yourself. There's people out there that say the most craziest, vicious, nastiest things about me. And then they never met me a day of their life. Don't know me at all. They don't know that, you know, I'm just, I'm me. I'm who I am on social media. I am who I am in real life. What you see is what you get. I'm comfortable with my skin. And let me tell y'all one more thing before we get up out of here. If you got somebody in your life that's just continuously negative, that every time you tell them, oh, I did this or I did that in a good way and they talk down on you whatever get rid of them get them out your life if you got somebody that's always feeding you negativity day in and day out every time you get on the phone or every time you see them it's always negativity get away from them because all because you know that saying when they say misery love company that's true okay y'all we need to raise ten thousand dollars for the next project okay if you want to donate to the dante show network make sure y'all bless the cash app or put something in the paypal i know y'all wonder like dante what type of shirt you got on listen my homeboy Sobe spochi man he got a merch store that i copped this from man when i say this shirt feels so good on my body Listen, it's about 85 degrees in this room that I'm in right now in my studio. And this shirt is so breathable, it make it, it feel real good, y'all. So make sure y'all check out the link in the comment section also to his store. Go check out his merch. If you need your business, products, or your social media channels promoted, make sure you shoot me a text at this number. 
my channel get over 5 million views per month. So that's a lot of eyes on your promotion. If you forgot to hit that like button, make sure you smash the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Be sure to get your Military Mind Games merch. The link will be pinned in the comment section. And last but not least, make sure y'all help me fight this war on poverty.